Oh, that's good, happy music, isn't it? The point is this to on BBC Radio Sheffield. You're listening to Paulette Edwards. So the celebrations then are nearly over and uh, New Year's Day can feel a little bit like the ultimate Monday morning. It's cold, it's barely stopped raining for weeks. Uh, the sun's out today, so that's good. So it's no surprise then if you do feel a little bit fed up despite the blue sky today. But that's OK because um, help to banish the winter blues is at hand. And in the studio with me is Frederica Roberts. She's the happiness speaker and trained laughter yoga leader. First of all, Frederica, we need to unpick that title. What does it all mean? <laughs> Good morning, Paulette. Well, um, the happiness speaker, I go into schools, businesses, charities, etc., and I speak about happiness and I share tips on, on how to be happy, um, which isn't to be confused with being jolly all the time because it's, it's absolutely fine not to feel jolly all the time. And I think that's part of happiness to accept that, you know, there will be days when you're not feeling great. Um, but it's, it's about sort of that overall being content with your life, can we talk about the winter blues and yeah. what that actually means? Well, I think there are certain things that, that very definitely happen from a practical uh, point of view. January, for a lot of people who are maybe on a monthly salary, is a very long month. Um, you, you get paid early in December, which is lovely, and then you've got a very long 31-day month in January. So it does feel like you're having to make your money stretch a long way. And, of course, you've spent most of it over Christmas presents and partying, etc. Um, so there is that. Um, obviously, the weather doesn't help. Um, there is seasonal affective disorder disorder that affects some people and just the lack of sunshine and and the cold weather that maybe doesn't want us to want, make us want to be outside as much as we usually would can affect us as well um and then the the letdown as you were saying you know after all the celebrations mm -hmm. and all the partying and then of course there are people who maybe haven't had a great christmas you know it's not jolly and wonderful for everyone and and so it's kind of compounding misery on misery but there are lots of things that we can do that, that hopefully we can talk about on, yes. on the show this we will talk about those things. Well, let's talk about seasonal affective disorder. I know there's a young woman who works at Radio Sheffield who's uh, started to bring in this massive light mm. that looks like she's under a sunbed, bless her heart. <laughs> uh, and that's, is that to counteract uh, seasonal, dis uh, uh, seasonal affective disorder, which is known as SAD, isn't it? Yeah, yeah what which is, is quite it? aptly named, actually, yeah. isn't it? Well, I'm not an expert on, on SAD, but um, as I understand it, it is you know, we all benefit from the sunlight and daylight. Um, so having reduced daylight hours, not spending as much time outdoors will affect us. So those lamps have been known to be mm. quite beneficial for people who do suffer. And and the other thing that everybody can do, because I think to some extent we probably all suffer a little bit, um, is to try and get a little bit of that natural daylight whenever possible. So even if you are working all day and you're leaving the house in the dark and you're coming home in the dark, mm. um, um, if you just at lunchtime just nip out even just for 10 minutes um, and, and have a little walk around the building you work in you know just try and make the most of that sunlight and even if it's not sunny daylight um, so that you are actually soaking up a bit a bit of natural light during yeah, the day that really helps. Soaking up a lot of water if it had gone out. Well yeah. <laughs> so what about New Year then because it, you know you said that it can be a tough time Christmas can be a tough time yeah. it depends on who you celebrate it with how you celebrate it sometimes when you're with a lot of people it can still be a difficult yeah, time. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, what are the things that we can do then um, going into the new year, especially if we're going to celebrate it on our own or if, we, you know, if we're not looking forward to that big midnight countdown, are the things we can consider? Uh, well, the first thing is that, you know, it doesn't have to be a massive celebration. It's a fairly arbitrary day, really, to kind of go, right year ends now we've got to celebrate it's nice to celebrate but you know there are lots of people who aren't lonely who are surrounded by friends etc who still go to bed before midnight because they think well why should i stay up when i'm tired just because it's new year's eve um so do something to pamper yourself that that night you know if like you're on what, your own then? what would you go well for? it depends what what you like you know face if it's pack. a hot bath with <laughs> well you know face pack if it's a nice hot bath with lots of candles if it's watching your favorite movie um, even if you're on your own, treat yourself to a nice meal. Why not? You know, really do something that you enjoy. And if you can put a comedy DVD on or something, um, laughter, as, as you've said, I'm, I'm a laughter yoga leader, so um, I am a big proponent of laughter. But laughter truly is one of the best things you can do to lift your mood and your spirit. So if you put a comedy DVD on something to really start getting you into that mood, it will actually start lifting your mood anyway. So that's for the night itself 
really. I think little things that you can do. And the other thing that I think would be really great is to spend a bit of time, because I've, I've seen a lot of people on Facebook saying, oh, 2015, it's been such a rubbish year. I can't wait to leave it behind me. Well, great, leave it behind you. But, you know, there's no such thing as a bad year. There will have been bad moments in that year. And some of those moments for some people may have lasted months, weeks, mm. whatever. But amongst all of that, no matter how much bad stuff has happened to you in that year, and quite a bit has happened to me this year as well, but um, there will always be good things as well. So why not spend some of that time rather than thinking about how bad the year was or trying to make New Year's resolutions that you may break by the end of the 1st of January, actually reflecting back on the good things that happened reflecting in 2015. The, the things that were good that happened to you and the things that you actually achieved because you will have achieved things no matter how little through the, throughout the year. BBC Radio Sheffield. I've got Frederica Roberts with me. She's a happiness speaker and she's a trained laughter yoga leader. I might see if she can get me to laugh, actually. We'll talk about New Year resolutions as well, shall we, Frederica? We'll do that after Womack and Womack teardrops. Not appropriate, but there you go. <laughs> get in touch. Don't forget to tell me about your highlights. Remember Frederica there talking about the positive aspects of 2015. Which moment would you like to tell me about? 81333 on the text, please. Radio Sheffield with Womack and Womack. You're listening to Paul S. I've got Frederica Roberts with me. She's a happiness speaker and trained laughter yoga leader. I'm going to see if she can laughter yoga me up a little bit later on. But I would like to wish, uh, Julie sent me a text. She says, Paulette, can you wish my mum a very happy birthday today? Her name's Eileen. Uh, she lives in Aston. So Eileen in Aston, are you listening? It'd mean a lot to her, says Julie. Uh, and she says, thank you and happy new year to you and all at Radio Sheffield. Same to you, Julie. And happy birthday to Eileen and happy new year to you as well. I hope you have a good time. And whatever you decide to do. So we were talking about New Year, we were talking about building up to the celebration of it, making sure that if we're going to spend it on our own, we don't want to put too much pressure on ourselves, Frederica. Yeah. If we don't want to go out there and see it in, if we don't want to count it in with Big Ben, that's absolutely fine. Do something nice yeah. to see the year off, as it were, you were saying. What about New Year resolutions, though? Well, you know, I've stopped making those a long time ago, actually, because I think it's another way to put pressure on yourself. You know, decide to do things. Of course, we all need goals in life. You, you can't achieve things if yeah, you don't know what say, you want to there, achieve. Is there a way to look but, positively <laughs> to the new year without putting pressure on ourselves? Yeah, I think, you know, look at things that are maybe a bit out there you know I, I think it's good to set yourself maybe one really massive goal that's that that's really scary and you think how am I gonna get there and but then actually look at how can you break that down how can you actually make it happen have you got Don't a just goal, say I'm then? gonna do that uh, well I've, I've got a fairly big one um, that's sort of a, a two to three year goal um, I want to um, start earning quite a lot from my speaking so that I can oh. take my girls um, to the Maldives because they're now at an age my eldest is 18 she's about to leave for uni my youngest is 16 and um, years ago I went to the Maldives with my husband and as much as I loved it it was like oh I wish the girls were here with us uh, our youngest loves snorkeling our eldest is absolutely mad about turtles <laughs> everything to do with turtles and the first thing that happened first swim I, w I did out there a massive turtle took a big dive in front of me and so I thought this is something that before the girls are, have their own families and go on their own holidays at some point I want to be able to take them on one last really big family holiday where they get to enjoy the things that are really important to them. And how are you going to break that down then? For so yourself? that's broken down into little steps for my business, for my speaking business. I've also uh, last year started a collaborative uh, business with two other speakers, Elizabeth Wright and Jane Snell. We formed something called the Resilience Wellbeing Success Program um, that's l launched really successfully in primary schools um, and uh, so it's part of growing that as well. And what about people listening now thinking, well, I don't want to really set a resolution. I know I'm, not, yeah. I'm rubbish at that. Day two, I'm out of it. The chocolate's out again. I'm, you know, doing <laughs> whatever. Um, how can we set realistic goals then? Well, I think one of the things you can start with is what are you good at and what do you enjoy doing? And 
find a way that you can actually build more of that into your life. Um, if there's something you're particularly good at doing, is it something that you want to develop more so that you can make a career of it? If you're already doing it for a living, can you actually do more of it in a way that, you know, can you learn new skills? Actually, learning new skills is one great way to boost your mood and, and be happier. So can you get training, etc., to get better at what you're already good at rather than trying to sort of pluck something mm. that, that you're not good at and start from scratch? And what do you enjoy doing? doing one of the best resolutions I think you can make that's really realistic is if there's something you enjoy doing resolve to do more of it. What about resolving not to make any resolutions and not to do anything just go into January the 1st <laughs> and just have a good time. Have a sense of adventure and see what life brings you why not you know you played I'm so excited you know mm. be excited because every day is a new day whether it's January the 1st or any day be excited about what the future holds and the possibilities yeah. And what about the steps then that you're going to give us for making ourselves you know making us feel better because after, I always think after Christmas, Christmas is great because it kind of sends you up on a journey, doesn't it? And it means yeah. you've got to prepare, you've got things to do, you f you're focused on that, you're forgetting that you're going towards the shortest day and <laughs> it's going to be colder and darker and horrible. Um, and then after that, um, you, you, it feels a bit like downhill, doesn't it? And you're waiting yeah. until you see a bit more daylight and spring <laughs> is coming. What can we do to get through those months, Frederica? Well, I think, and um, we talked about off air a bit about the importance of this, so um, gratitude is a massive one. And I think what I mentioned earlier about reflecting on the year that's passed, that's also part of gratitude, you know, looking at what's been good. Um, now, you mentioned to me earlier on about Oprah and, and writing down five things before you go to bed, which is a, a great thing to, do, thing to do, and parents can really do that with their children, you know, as they go to bed. What's, what's gone well today? What have you enjoyed about today? Getting them to think about the good things. Um, I like to get up in the morning and write down three gratitudes, and that's based on um, a research by Professor Martin Zelligman as well, um, that if you write down three good things, but really write down not just what it is, but why it so was a good thing. What did you do thing. today, then, can I ask? Is that too personal? <laughs> well, today I was actually really grateful to be coming in here because I love going on air on the radio. Uh, you know, I talk for a living, so I love doing this kind of thing and sharing sharing my tips. Um, I was actually really grateful for um, having been able to start speech therapy for my voice um, because it has been a, an issue for, for a few months now. Um, so I'm really grateful that it's good enough now that I was able to actually come in and, and do this. And I was really grateful to have friends coming around tonight um, for a party. Um, it's something we do every two years when we're in the country for New Year's, and uh, they really look forward to it. Uh, and, and we do. You know, last last year I posted Happy New Year from my mum's house in Luxembourg, and uh, oh. my friends were posting traitor. <laughs> you know, they, they keep threatening to come to our house and have a party without us. <laughs> Charming. So gratitude. Then do, yeah. do we need to write these in a book, or can we just think them? Can we just say, Oh, I'm you really grateful that my boyfriend them. bought me a cup of tea. In bed this you can just think them. Count? Anything's better than nothing. But if, like me, you're a bit of a st stationary freak, you know, and you really like a nice book, write them down um, because a it makes you actually think about them a bit more and a bit more deeply. But also because you have a lovely book then that you can look back on. And if you are having a bad, a bad day, a bad week, a bad month, why not go back over some of the gratitudes? If you're struggling to think about what's gone well in the past few months, just look back over everything you've written down. Wonderful. Uh, and just before you go, can I just have a little bit of laughter yoga, okay. please? Can you just show me what you do? Because, some t you know, if you're feeling fed up, you don't yeah. really want to laugh. Sometimes you really want to cry. You know, if things go wrong and you're feeling fed up, the last thing you want to do is I laugh. I know, and that's How why it's so important. Laugh, then? Because you can laugh without comedy, without humour, without jokes. Now, in a group I would do this, you, you do all sorts of exercises, shaking hands, etc. But actually, and join in when I do this, especially as you've got more voice than I have, you just literally decide to laugh and you just go for it and you go... <laughs> If you listen, you've got to join in now. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, and you really? just do it. And if you can sustain that for five to ten minutes. Five to ten minutes of laughter. Yeah. <gasps> You'd be exhausted. You will you? be exhausted, but it works your stomach muscles, your facial muscles. It gets oxygen into your lungs. It gets endorphins into your system. You'll feel great. Oh, I can you hear about I there? Can hear them, oh, yeah. there's some robust <laughs> laughter going on, on out there. Frederica Roberts, happy new year to you. Happy Happiness new year to you. Happiness speaker and trained laughter. After yoga leader, thank you very much for joining us, and we will try to go four throughout 2016. Thank you for having me. It's been lovely to meet you. BBC Radio Sheffield.